Okay. Check. Give me a check, Greg. Check, 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 check. All right. Check. There we go. Check, check. All right. Welcome to Real Liberty Media, folks. And uh, I'm going to do a real short intro for today's show of American Dissonance uh, Retribution. Refresh. There we go. It's time for payback. It's time for boss horse. It's time. All right, eight seconds. Good. We did that. Uh, True. So today, um, let me get back over here to chat, the Chitty Chat channel. Uh, hey, there's Donna. Got the uh, sound chick. <laughs> She is sound an chick. official sound, sound chick. chick. Yes, she is. She's a very sound chick. She's very sound, absolutely. Uh, today, uh, this is American Dissonance Retribution, and this is spinning around here. I'm uh, checking the, the page. I got some stuff to go through, but I uh, wanted to start out with because, hey, everybody's got their own idea. And I had some notes that I lost those set, set of notes, but I asked some friends. I may be able to recall a bit of it, but... Uh, what in their mind is uh, retribution, and what do you what do you think, uh, Grimner, when you th when you hear that word? Well, I, let, let, let's start off with your the name of your show there. Okay. Uh, American dissonance, and what is uh, what does dissonance mean to you in the reference to how you're using it? it means there's a uh, a sway. In, in the way that people are thinking things are going in this world, and they're not happy with it, there's uh, you don't have to be a dissonant to have dissonance, right? Uh, from what I'm seeing here, I, I, I had the Vanna bring up the definition of dissonance there, and it says a harsh, disagreeable combination of sound sounds, a uh, discord. So um, I'm going to say that your banjo playing is a dissonance. Yes, it is. It is. And that's that's the okay. fun thing about it. And I'll tell you why. Because you don't have to be afraid of not being not only not perfect, but not even good. As long as you're doing something, right? Do something even if it's not right. That's what Dan in Tennessee says. It's kind of funny. Uh, sometimes that really doesn't apply, but... Uh, other times, uh, it does. How many titles have I got so far? I think, uh, Beth, I think I'm at four or five here. Um, because I did a two-in-one show, I had to go back and redo my second week. The first week, part of it didn't record, so I combined them. <laughs> Banjo music doesn't hurt your eyes, Moose Girl. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, um... So, just to clarify, uh, so to you, in the way you're using the word dissonance here. Um, Discord is the shortest definition, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so people are, uh, and, 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 you're, and you're saying it's American dissonance versus then global dissonance. Say it one more time. I'm sorry. I was reading the chat. I lost uh, my I said, So you're saying it's American dissonance versus global dissonance. Well, you know, America is the leader of the free world, af after all. And uh, just like when you're thinking about America, uh, when you say there goes the left coast, so goes the right coast, east and west, right? And I remember growing up as a, a kid, I'd be going out to Vegas during the summer times, coming back to Tulsa. Uh, pay attention. Yes, thank you for the distraction, Donna. And I, I come back and uh, you know we'd have like the word bitching. Hey, there's uh, my feral cat coming looking for something neat outside. I was wait a minute. I'm wait. I was supposed to be paying attention. Okay, squirrel. <laughs> I did put peanut butter out. Yeah, you you yeah you you kind of live in a house of squirrels. Yeah. So, anyways, come back. Like I remember, we were saying bitching out in Vegas, and uh, uh, so I come back to Tulsa and start the word bitching, and uh, so I, I brought back like the sands from the West Coast. But it's like how rap music was invented, right? Uh, left Coast and Right Coast. Well, I'm too sure there's anything right about the East Coast, but <laughs> in California it was uh, what was it? 
break dancing was uh, invented by a Mexican stealing hubcaps at the stoplight and on uh, the East Coast by uh, a Jew boy with epilepsy. Oh, wait. I, I'm not sure I can say all this stuff. Wait, stop. Cancel that. Back up. We're, we're gonna get, we're gonna get kicked off YouTube. Alright, here's another one. Not for YouTube. <laughs> this is another not for YouTube uh, edition of American Dissonance because hey, uh, if you cause discord over there, you know what happens. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. Uh, you, you know, speaking of uh, not for YouTube, um, and total sidebar here, another squirrel. Um, uh, about a week, week and a half ago, two weeks, um, uh, if you were posting up on Bitch Shoot, uh -huh. then um, YouTube, YouTube was not allowing for any Bitch Shoot related links to be posted on uh, on Twitter. Um, so anytime you tried to post a, a Bitch Shoot link on Twitter, it would come up with some you know bizarre thing. Well, we don't, we don't. There, there's something wrong with that link. It, it won't work. So what BitChute has cleverly done was they created another uh, URL. Um, so instead, instead of it uh, being a, a link directly to BitChute, they have rerouted uh, their, their, their BitChute links through a, a URL called shoot.rocks, and which when you when you when they when you try to post your you, your uh, your link to your BitChute video over there on Twitter. Bitchute, I, I mean, uh, Twitter doesn't recognize it as a Bitchute link because Bitchute found a way around it. <laughs> well, good for them. Yeah, I know. I would click on it, and it would say this isn't a safe thing and uh, can go yeah, back yeah, yeah. to the safe site, all that crap. Yeah. Yes, you well, know, so, so, so they, they, beat, they beat the uh, censor man at his own game uh, by by doing that, that reroute. <laughs> Good for them. That's some mud in their eye. And that's kind of uh, what retribution is in a way, is uh, some mud in the eye. Um, yeah, Facebook, for instance, and their fact checkers, I noticed they've calmed down a lot, except for, I guess, on COVID-related stuff. Ah, crap. There's another kick from YouTube. I said COVID. I meant COVID. COVID. Yes, COVID. Corona Bologna. Yes, thank you. Screw you, uh, yeah. YouTube. Get bit and get okay. bit shoot. So, so anyway, back to the uh, theme of the show, I guess. Yeah. Uh, your, your retribution. Um, so you, you, I think uh, retribution is uh, making the, the 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 person or people or group or individual, whatever, uh, that has caused you uh, some pain, anxiety, hurt of some manner or not. Um, uh, making them uh, feel that anguish back while relieving your own um, in a appropriate level, uh, not 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 to go overboard, not to drop the mother of all bombs on them, uh, but uh, unless of course they drop the mother of all bombs on you, uh, which would be equal and adequate, uh, proper. So I, I think retribution is uh, you know. Equal payback. I wonder, uh, and and I title in here, "Mercy is the mark of a great man." When does it become wrong or evil or bad, a bad thing to do if uh, if it's in uh, retaliation? Say, um, I meant to to track this word down a little bit, retribution, and I uh, looked at it a little bit, and it's. Uh, I always, well, I think I might even have it open over here still in the Oxford. Yeah, they, they're they pretty short. Normally, Oxford Dictionary has a pretty good. Um, there you go. That, that's, that's a perfect right there. Punishment administered in return for a wrong committed. Yeah. So, and to me, it, it, the, the reason for a retribution would be um, to prevent them from further causing you uh more wrongs in your in your direction, um, not not to uh, necessarily make it so that it's uh, you know totally disables them from doing whatever they do, uh, just to prevent them from from, from th th so they can weigh out uh, 
the benefits of their actions as, as they saw there was possibly a benefit to, to causing you pain or harm. Um, so you do something back to say, it's, it's not going to help you to, uh, to harm us because you're going to get back at least what you have done to us. And uh, that, that will prevent you from you know, doing bad things to me and or others. Well, I'll tell you, it's kind of like uh, in some situations specifically, it'd be like trying to uh, spank a gator's ass. You know, it's going to happen. You're going to get bit. I'll, I'll tell you a story. I went down to Louisiana. I was going down there to get me some gator shoes. I wanted a fine pair, and I got down there, and them Cajun says, when I asked them where to get some, said, well, you got to r- wrestle that there gator out there and uh, beat him and drag him up on the shore. And he wasn't a big gator. He wasn't no more than six, seven foot long, I reckon. And Lord Almighty, he mm-hmm. liked to kill me, and I finally got him subdued and drug up on there on the shore. And would you believe that gator was barefoot? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no, really, honestly, he didn't have no shoes on tall. <laughs> now, the retribution that I'm talking about is uh, uh, people in, in response to uh, overreaching government. Um, how far can you go before that gator really turns around and bites your head off? Um or drag you down in a gator hole, which you know symbolic for dra- taking you into the to the hole in prison. And, uh, I mean, what what they do to people that uh, have so so called wronged the government, people that are in this uh, that have this dissonance, that this discord with the government, uh, are seeking remedy and being beat down at every turn. Um, there's there's several uh, procedures from uh, uh, the U. UCC and uh, he was talking about Donna uh, and Rob was uh, he he knows about this sort of thing but eventually it caught up and it wasn't working anymore and then you know you got these people I'm a sovereign citizen and you know I can drive down the road that don't work no more uh, just so many instances and um, up in Malheur Ed, when uh, they killed the boy Finnicum you know. Uh, even though I believe he had, he was justified to to have a fear for uh, what they were about to do to him, and they set him up as a set up for the takedown, uh, he was trying to get to a safe place to the next county over and to that sheriff that he had a, a meeting with. They all did, uh, but that didn't stop him from being killed. And Sean Anderson, up in the Idaho, decided to run from the police late or early one morning, two or three o'clock in the morning. And wonder he wasn't dead, shot in the head, and uh, a couple other times, I guess, that uh, he'll uh, most likely be spending the rest of his life in prison, I suspect. Uh, what is this retribution that a person thinks that they have? But in reality, there's a, there's a power that, that will stop that. And matter of fact, they use retribution, in effect, to, to silence the dissonance and the discontent, the discord. Uh, and that that's really the mark on them is not not mercy by any means. No, no, they're never merciful. Uh, let, they, they, don't, they, they don't care. Yeah, they're they're untouchable, aren't they? But talking about the Clintons, how how uh, uh, they've been uh, free of feeling any retribution. They have not. They they've not been touched, and probably uh, live and die in this world and still be hailed as heroes long after they're gone. Yeah, well, the thing about the Clintons is uh, if they feel threatened in any manner, uh, whether it be to their reputation or uh, their bank accounts or or whatever, they'll kill you. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) They'll just flat out kill you. And and they're they're pretty good at making it look like suicide. He shot himself. Uh, Yeah, suicide. Arkansas. Exactly. Killed himself with three bullets to the back of the head. Yeah, while while handcuffed. (laughs) Yeah, and he hung himself. uh, So uh, yeah, Um, uh, yeah. There are certain enemies that, uh, rather than seek retribution, uh, may just may just want to avoid. 
because because their tentacles are everywhere. Uh, so your your retribution may cause you further pain. Are you there? Am okay. Talking to myself. Okay. Now can you hear me? Yeah. There you are. Okay. Good. <laughs> I, I I went to the cough button. I forget which way I I put it. So what what I'm looking at today in continuing in this theme, I'll have to go back and look. I think this is, let's see, five. Uh, started on yeah the twelfth, two twelve, and so, um, what is that? This is five then, right? I do believe, but only four yeah. titles so far, because I did a two and one. This is a uh, a lot of numbers of twos and ones that uh, come together in this. Uh, succession in the series. But what I look at is this uh, fact-finding mission for a just war in it being in uh, in progress. There's uh, this I take uh, and copy. It's a uh, uh, through. It says though the system seems broken beyond repair and injustice, uh, and it ruins many thousands of lives every day. And individual citizens still have the power to override bad laws and bad applications of the law by serving as an informed and courageous jury, and uh, they'd uh, then be jury heroes in the courtroom. Of course, that's not always true. They, uh, uh, anytime you you try to uh, promote an informed jury, I mean, they might even get you with uh, jury tampering. So what what would it, would it mean is uh, being repentant, reform uh, the jury as a means of equality. The primary objective of the jury system is to give a voice to the community in, in uh, community in legal proceedings, in order to prevent governmental oppression, and at ri and arrive at uh, righteous verdicts. Yet to meet this demand, uh, this demanding claim, jurors are not only promoted to decide on facts and evidence, but also to ponder on the application of the law. Although the jury lost its lawmaking function in the early 19th century. It is still capable of being a means of equality due to its human perspective on the law that ought to guarantee an interpretation in accordance with our sense of justice. And I think I could disagree with some of that there because they are in fact not allowed to be an informed jury. And they are instructed on how to make their decision by the judge. Um, so all these uh, uh, legal bindings that, that come about about and specifically uh and in the uh, radio log here i've got all this uh linked where uh, you can click it and read more about a uh, black letter law um and basically this just states that the law was quite simple every citizen oh wait i, I think i'm getting ahead of myself um i am the black letter law is a little bit different that's cl being that all these judges agree there's a specificity of uh what is accepted, and so they don't even allow any kind of variance. But again, all these rules inside the courtroom are, you know, you always heard the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Uh, that uh, That is not, not the case at all. So um, I, I stop right there because it goes into something else, but uh, what, uh, what do you think there, that the jury system is, is an effectual way of uh, upholding justice? No part of the legal system is an effectual way of holding up justice. It, it, is, it is all corrupted uh, and and controlled so that they don't have an interest in the truth. They don't want to know the truth, and they don't want you to know the truth if you're part of the, the, the jury. Um, and I can tell you this for sure because I myself have been uh, harassed handing out materials from Fiji. Uh, that's the uh, fully, fully informed jury association. Yeah. Uh, uh, org. Fiji. Org. Uh, they they do not. They that's not allowed. And if uh, they will they will come and harass you if you're trying to hand out information to the rest of your jury pool uh, from that group or or anything that that points out the fact that the jury is allowed to nullify uh, based upon the fact that it's a bad law. Right. They, they 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 don't want that information out there. So uh. <laughs> there's there's people that have been charged with jury tampering for doing just that very thing. 
Yeah, so, so if if they want to prevent the jurors from being informed and in knowing the actual rules and the law, uh, then, then, of course, they're doing that because they want to control the way the whole trials go. Uh, it's corrupt. It's corrupt from the bottom up uh, and I the top to, down. I give a good example there in the uh, Bundy case in Vegas that the – prosecution they'd already been uh uh with brady violations the, this guy uh mowry uh, he, he'd been using these tactics and been caught before and it's like well that's just the way we do things and um did the same thing and it but it was so blatant this time and the only reason it was brought to light was because uh ryan bundy was so persist persistent and, and uh adept at uh redirecting and asking for certain answers and finally come about. Um, that was an evidentiary hearing that uh, it really started with that uh, that gal that worked for the Forest Service because they were saying that there were no cameras, no snipers uh, that were positioned against the Bundys out there when, in fact, in 2014 it was common knowledge. I mean, uh, they, they went and got their one of their cameras and was walking around and everybody was seeing it so how are you going to tell me it wasn't and, and they wouldn't allow that or that the fact that they were uh being surveilled with snipers and stuff that wasn't allowed and uh no no right to self-defense you know it's like when they come for you uh you comply or die right that that's your choices so what's the trick that's is uh huh yeah that's it for sure. Those are your choices. That's it. <laughs> now, I go to, uh, as myself, uh, being a witness, and that's um, one of my roles. I, I mean, I claim a lot of roles in this life, and, and that is uh, one of them. Um, so when we consider the black letter law that what is evident, and we see that uh, the law was quite simple, that every citizen citizen owes to society the duty of giving testimony to aid in the enforcement of the law. And a witness is not excused from testifying because of his fear of reprisal, threatening his or her, uh, his or uh, his and or, <laughs> try again, threatening his and or his family's lives. It was uh, black letter law, as they say, carved in stone over the years by hundreds of judges and justices. Um, so, some people accept a plea deal and uh, others uh, do so and then testify uh, against uh, co-defendants and, in fact, selling out. Uh, that's the way the system's set up. Whoever rolls over first, you know, gets the deal. Uh, but they intend to uh, crucify some some. Uh, you know their their target. Um, I took this from John Grissom. They deserve to die, and I hope they burn in hell, and a uh, time to kill. And uh, also, yes, uh, he he wrote this riveting story of retribution and justice. It's a good book I listened to. They made a movie. I think I've seen it a long time ago. Matthew McConaughey, but I didn't remember. When I was listening to the book, which I think I'm pretty sure I listened to it before, so uh, I don't know. I think maybe 20 hours or something audio book. But uh, I think my buddy's back. Hey, Grimner. What's that? Let me give you the mic what? just a minute. I think I got somebody pulled up. Let me give you the mic just for what? a minute. I'm what? what? Okay, fine. Uh, I'm sorry. Right, Hold I, on. I, I'm just gonna holler out. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. They, uh, I'm, I'm just reading the chat here while Vinny's talking, and and uh, yeah, Vinny uh, hangs on to the just us system. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, well, and, and, and you know, most people do. It's um, it it it, it it's a it's a curse, and you can see it uh, pretty far and wide. Uh, even here in Real Liberty Media, yeah, you know, we got people that come in here free enslaved. Uh, not going to mention any names, free enslaved, but uh, that, that hang on uh, to to the uh, the justice systems, the legal system, uh, as if it is going to help them, it is going to benefit them in some way down the line. 
And it's only going to benefit you if they want it to benefit you. It's not going to benefit you uh, if you're going against them. Hey, sorry yeah, about that. You're back? Yeah, buddy yeah. pulled up. There's a deer just standing right there. You just hit him in the head with a rock. They're thick around here. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled up on the bed. That, oh, speaking of which, uh, Bill Wild. There was a colt raised by goats, so the story goes. That oh, a goat, I see <laughs> yes, came upon a colt in the mountains, trapped her in a rock. They rescue him, then raise him as her own, teaching him to navigate the craggy terrain and rough waters of the region. Sturdy, confident, and now immensely capable, the horse transforms into the adventure-ready all-new Bronco. Uh, R there and trademark up there, built wild. Yes. Uh, the paraphrase, plagiarist strikes again. Yep, I, 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 I like that new Bronco. I mean, I, I like the concept, the idea of it. Anyway, I don't know about actual, in actual practice, um, but uh, it, I mean, they look cool. They got some nice features. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know about the power and such, but they say, oh yeah, we got all these goat modes built in, so you can, you know, go through any kind of terrain. So, uh, well, yeah. I bring the but daddy I, in. But, but, again, I'm not going to pay $45,000 <laughs> no for a yeah. freaking car. Nice to look at. <laughs> so I, I bring this in because we think of ourselves maybe as uh, being in this what we're supposed to be, what's right in the society. And uh, some of us see it and understand it, and other people just accept it. So to be uh, kind of the goat, you know, what do you get? It's uh, Dan Oaf. He says uh, a lot of cowboyism, a lot of smart stuff. And one thing he told me a long time ago was, is you don't fence goats in, you fence them out. So the goat's kind of the uh, the outlaw, right? Sheep, you fence them in. They're simple, simple to fence in. Cows, pretty much so, but they're tricky. You will get uh, some. They'll they'll jump the fence. You can't never stop them once they start or or go plumb through a fence. Now. <laughs> Other than they want on the other side of that fence so bad, you know, because the grass is always greener, of course. And this one old farmer, he is telling me a story once. He says, "Boy, I had to watch her every time I'd go in and out." And he said, "Finally, he got she got by me one time and ran out there. And first thing she done was stick her head back through the fence and started eating grass." Now that just tells you, you know, sheep and cattle, and how you compare that, you know. So that horse, that wild bronco, that mustang, you know, that adventure ready, all new. So we got to break out, you know, all this. And uh, there's a, a saying that said that uh, they were exalted and that ravens brought them bread and uh, they drank out of the brook. Um, being ready. Being ready is where we got to be. We got a message to tyranny. Oh, well, agony. At what agony was that? What despair when the tomb of memory was rent open and all the ghosts of his old life came forth to scourge him. There are many are called and few are chosen. We have a, a destiny in this world, maybe. What? No, I think we make it as we go. And we remember that uh, mercy is the mark of a great man. Stabs a little. Well, I guess I'm just a good one. <laughs> Stabs a little more. Well... I'm all right. I'm just all right, baby. Well, I I find serenity anyways, and that comes from uh, Maul Reynolds. Uh, he was an anti-hero, or, or uh, perhaps more specifically, a, a partial moral relativist. And uh, he would kill those who threaten him with a philosophy that if someone tries to kill you, you try and kill him right back. <laughs> He's not above joking with his crew or picking bar fights, but he retained his honor in the face of adversity. It's a firefly of being that light, right? Yeah. You ever watch that Serenity Firefly show? Sci-fi? I did, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that one. I, I guess I probably watched all there was in there. I like sci-fi. Because, um, cause, cause, yeah, uh, uh, Summer Glow. <laughs> I don't remember their names. That must have been one of the pretty girls. Oh, no, no, no. That's the that's the actress's name, yeah, the, the little chick, the summer glow. Yeah, she's uh 
Anyway, um, <laughs> I got a I got a message here from Chloe. Okay. Uh, that that says, uh, where, where, uh, she's, I got too many Chloe's. Uh, all right. It says, if the legal, she says, if the legal system benefited you, you wouldn't turn it down either. Well, that may be true or it may not be true. If it benefited me in a way that did not cause undue harm and unjustified harm uh, to others, uh, and, and they, they were going to do something that uh, was proper and not outlandish uh, as they typically do, uh, then, then I would say, okay, um, if I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, sue a person uh, to, 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 you know, get my retribution, um, as it were, then uh, I would probably accept uh, that, uh, that, that judgment. Um, uh, however, I've never been in that situation, so I, I can't really say. Um, uh, now, if, if, if they were going to do something you know, like say somebody caused me a hundred dollars worth of damage, and I was suing them to get that hundred dollars worth of damage back. And and of course the lawyer would, you know, he'd want millions because that's how lawyers work. They want millions because they get at least a third of whatever the judgment is. Uh, and, and I would say, no, I don't think so. They didn't cost me a million dollars in damage. I, they they only cost me a hundred dollars in damage. And and so uh, you can't really go through the legal system. Uh, mostly at least not with a lawyer and to to uh, you know get your hundred dollars back uh, to get to get to be made whole again right mm -hmm. did you go away again no am i can talking to myself here again can you hear me is this hello is this the grim nair show <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, oh man you got me over here <laughs> you, you the oogie boogie <laughs> man <laughs> do you know who the the oogie boogie is on uh the nightmare before christmas burton you ever watch that movie? Tim Burton? Yeah. What about him? You heard of that one there? Oogie Boogie? The Oogie Boogie no. Man? That's from that no, movie. He's I, the I, villain. I knew he did the movie The Nightmare Before Christmas, but I don't think I ever watched it. Hmm. I don't think I watched it uh, very much because it was like, I don't know. It's kind of I don't dark. Know. If there's something dark. called Oogie Boogie, I'm probably not interested. <laughs> well, <laughs> are you a gambling man? One more roll of the dice ought to do it. Let's play the living dead boogie. Now, these are clickable right here. You can click the first one and find out about who the Oogie Boogie Man is. And uh, let's play uh, the living dead boogie. That way you probably like the, uh, uh It's certainly uh, copyrighted. Uh, well, shake hands with the devil. That, uh, <laughs> oh, here's another game you can play. And you put this in there to, uh, when I... When I said something about yeah, uh, something about a top, you know, spinning like a top or something, it's a Drydale. Remember that? No. That word Drydale, that little game thing. It's not a top, but it's a dreidel. Dreidel. A dreidel. 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 Yes, dreidel. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Hey, there's all kinds. Of... Haven't, haven't you ever listened to uh, Adam Sadler <laughs> doing his doing his Jewish songs? <laughs> He does that one dreidel dreidel song. <laughs> Donna said it's an introduction to gaming and games of chance for uh, our Jewish youth. youth. Yeah, it probably is. I mean, you know, you got to. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know how it's played. I know you just spin that thing and whatever. Hey, I uh, I saw a really good movie. I watched it twice, and I I copied some stuff here and I wrote some other stuff, but it really fits, uh, I think, into the idea of uh, retribution. It's a whole new tale, though. It's uh, uh, kind of uh, before that, uh, being a wanted man, the cause of freedom. And it's the fight for freedom. It goes on. Overall, there's another story to be told, one where a fat man really questions the motivations of its lead character. Uh, Mel Gibson's badass Santa is uh, obviously prim for some uh, sweet revenge in a world uh, he increasingly disapproves of. But the most uh, logical end point would see uh, Chris taking our, out dictators and rogue, rogue agents. Uh, I mean, there's that idea, you know, uh, what was that one uh, show, that gum with... Uh... <laughs> I farted. Uh, it'll come back to me. Anyways, you know, 
that force of good, right? Santa, he's supposed to be a good man. He's a badass Santa in this. But anyways, only to end up facing himself in the mirror and wondering where the line between naughty and nice truly lies. At least that's one way to uh, that this potential uh, world could pan out. You know, if there was that magic man. Uh, but we find much ado about nothing in accusations of the villain instead. The, but the not, the mob never forgets. So, right, to stir them up, uh, here comes your propaganda. You know, still in the show, it's a game stopper. Uh, me, I type, therefore I am. Yeah, tyranny runs, it runs rampant. So you might call okay, this well, uh, unprecedented uh, protest. Yes. To, just to try and get this back to your your topic of the day, retribution. Mm-hmm. What what would you say? I mean, well, okay. First off, why why did you select that topic for today? Well, because there is this fight in the American dissonance, and some people feel. Uh, I mean, we honestly could tip very quickly into to civil discord, uh, civil unrest, civil war even. Uh, and then the other side, that this uh, idea of revolution, you know, and uh, I'm what other people call, uh, inappropriately call anarchy, uh, where the destruction of peace. Uh, uh, peace is truly found by settlement in the law. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's corrupted into the courts, and we have the bar association rule instead. Okay, so you say that peace is brought about by settlement in a court of law. No. Well, no. what was it exactly you said there? That peace is settled in law, law, true law, which is not corrupted uh, by all these uh, words and phrases that, uh, you know, uh, even if you try to use them in a court of law, it's like, well, you're playing a rigged game and go back. Uh, you want to go with the roll of the dice, the oogie boogie man, because that's where you're at, you know. You're, you're right. there with the accusations of the villain, and you're trying all this stuff, and what are you accomplishing? Much ado about nothing. In the meantime, there they are demonizing uh, these people in, in media. Remember, the mob, the mob never forgets. But okay, so all right, so that's um, so where where is the retribution part coming in? Uh, I understand that okay, it's possible that there will be uh, some civil unrest, civil discord, uh, such things like that. Um, of course, and that will not bring about peace. That'll bring about more tyranny, right? Yeah. Um, uh, generally, when, when those kind of things happen, then the tyranny jacks itself up to a higher level. Uh, the tyrants, uh, with the, the tyrannical so-called leaders. Um, so, uh, where where does the retribution come in there? Well, mainly, I say I see it coming from the government in back onto the people in any type of uh, manner uh, of protest. Uh, or any type of, uh, what kind of words could I call it, counterinsurgency, uh, in a sense. Because, I mean, we are an occupied nation. Um, there's a lot of examples. The Browns, you know, they protested, uh, revolted against taxes. Uh, Gordon right. Call, you know, who I uh, spoke about in the first two broadcasts, um, where did he end up? Uh, Ed Brown's still in prison. Uh, even against uh, the Supreme Court rulings that uh, uh, just kind of took took that double sentencing of all those years, and uh, which they did for for the others, uh, Daniel Riley and uh, Jason Gerhardt and uh, Ed's wife Elaine. So they're out. Um, but Ed, he's he's being detained. That's retribution from from this judge that specifically. Uh, not only did he not reduce it, but he gave him some more time. Um, they do what they want to. Uh, that's right. That's so it's the it's tyranny. It's not, it's not. It's not really retribution at that point. It's just tyranny. Yeah, they uh, they take retribution against him because you know he's he makes headway uh, and they retaliate. So retribution is also you know in the sense of retaliation. 
Um, people are thrown in the hole because of their political positioning. You know, Schaefer Cox, um, many many others uh, that that stand want to stand out against the the oppression, then they get knocked down. They're singled out. They're targeted. Um, that's where you get right. it. target on your back. Zach De La Roche said your uh, your anger is a gift. Served cold, frozen in blocks, which would hurt when thrown. And, and rage. He, he said he's the guy. He's the guy from Rage Against the Machine. Rage Against the Machine. So I messed up in my. Um, somehow I had uh, some funny stuff going on when I was making this blog here, but it uh, took out some links or whatever. But it's there. It can be looked up. Um, I come down past uh, the hero, victim, and villain alert, and I have uh, news on Nolte and Doucette and a phone call from Stephen Nolte in Colorado Prison. He uh, He's messing with his uh, Judge Anna Von Ritz or something, and the same kind of thing Doucette was doing with his uh, constit or whatever, constitutional or no continental get judge stuff and filing papers and stuff like that trying to uh, put liens on officials because there is no common law Colorado did away with that and they codified it uh, so you know it's more stacked against your stuff it's kind of like a po the pocketbook of boners and uh, unorthodox taxidermy and I did have a link copied for that but it's gone away too anyways it goes about pain and degradation and they will burn your village to the ground they have to kill us because they can't break our spirit that's what john trudel said sometimes they have to kill us he said we're taking a line that is rightfully ours we choose the right to be who we are we know the difference between the reality of freedom and the illusion of freedom uh brings us in to uh there is a way to live with the earth and a way to live wait there is a way to live with the earth and a way not to live with the earth and we choose the way of the way of the earth it's about power he said and we find the wretched afflictions that are, are cast upon us right okay here it is where where I've said this what we were saying about peace settled in law it says peace is settled in the in law, not the law, but it in law and justice by restoration of the harm, not by retaliation or retribution, uh, collusion, conspiracy, and conflict of interest permeate the justice system. That is American dissonance. Okay, I'll buy that. Is that good? Yeah, and where's that from? What's that? What's that quote from? From me. You okay? Yeah, I took right. part of it the, in lessons learned from behind the woodshed about peace being settled in law. That that's where my premise comes from. Okay, but you say in law, but not in the law. Right. Um, so therefore, how is that accomplished? Well, that is the American dissonance, is it not? Uh, people are trying. They're trying to go uh, and and fight the battle in the courts. But once you get in the courtroom, you've already lost. Um, right. Yeah, you're on their, their, their field, and you're playing by their rules, and their rules change to benefit them whenever uh, they see that you, that you are actually gaining ground. Uh, so. See, now I'll tell you something about myself. So, 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 but that doesn't answer the question. Okay, ask me um, a question again. <laughs> okay, since peace is uh, achieved in law, but not in the law, meaning in their system, so how do how how do you do it? How do you get it? Where how, where? See, that's the whole dilemma, isn't it? That that is it, because people have tried remedy and they they don't get it. They sink it through all the uh, the channels and means available to them. But mm -hmm. no, it doesn't come. That's why this is a, a fact-finding mission for a just war in progress. Because I'm, a, I myself, I, I'm a, I believe in peace. Uh, 
non-aggression policy, but that doesn't mean that there's not a time for uh, for to what not let somebody beat you down. What when does? Oh it yeah, happen? I mean uh, self self defense, uh, uh, protection of of your you know your own property. Uh, that that does if you if you you know. Uh, attack somebody for, for, for going after you or your property, that does not violate the uh, non-aggression, non-aggression principle. Um, that, that, that is, you're not aggressing at that point. You are, you are defending, you're protecting. Uh, so <clears throat> you, you perfectly fine within, within the NAP uh, there. Well, you know what happens when the law comes for you. Um, you can do or whatever, think whatever you want to on that, but it's going to, they're going to kill you, kill you dead. Well, and that's you what would have happened. Yeah. You, you, you call it the law, but I call them jackbooted thugs. Yeah, I don't call that the law at all. Law, well, the you law. Said, you, said that, you said when the law comes for you. Yeah, okay, right. You, you, yes, I stand corrected. The law, yeah. The Johnny law. Jack Johnny booted law. Johnny. Yes. <laughs> Jack booted Johnny. Yes. Um, yeah. The law is. Um, it's almost, I would think, to be universally understood uh, a right and wrong. I mean, we have this, uh, um, unless it's broken, and it is broken on some people, that, that inner voice um, that, that tells you right from wrong, your conscience. And um, the farther you walk away from the one guy on, uh, on your left shoulder and go, go toward, you know, tilt your ear to the other, uh, the more you tend to listen. So... Yeah, I think we choose our path, and there is a righteous path. It is complicated in how we uh, navigate through this world right here, especially when you're dealing with uh, um, mostly when you got something. Then that's when you got more to worry about. You know, that the Bundys out there, and they've got the grazing rights and the water rights out there on this land, and um, powers that be want it. So. They've been about decades about uh, removing the the folks off there. That out of fifty, I believe it was fifty three uh, ranchers out there in that part of Nevada, uh, he was the last one and not give up. But they come to kill him. Now, if it wasn't for all the hundreds and uh, thousands over over time there that came and stood in the gap, there is no doubt about what would have happened to him and his family, because they were prepared to kill him. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 an invading army, and they want your. So they're pirates. Yeah, you know, they they want they want to come in and steal all your stuff, and and if you wind up dead, that's probably preferable to them. You know, so what is law? So what I possess, what is mine, is mine, and nobody has the right to come take it. Nobody has the right to uh, come and assault me. Um, or or to extort me, right? Which that's that's what this. Um, that's just another form of theft, yeah. Yeah, right. Now there's a, there's a difference, right? And let's say, uh, all right, if you want to join into this program, and let's okay, well, I'll give you so much of my check, and then at the end, I, I'll have all this money there after I decide to go and retire, but. In the meantime, you know, they're taking this fund and they're stealing from it from the whole time and then come back and pay you pennies on the dollar. It's like these... Uh, um, and they act like they're doing you a favor. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm not against uh, proper, uh, and I, I hate to use the word government, but organization that, you know, is uh, a con- confederacy of peoples that, uh, you know, you say, okay, here... Uh, you go protect our rights, and you know what do they do instead? They go there, spend their career trying to write bills and stuff, and I mean make more laws. And it's like, I think we ought to be sending people there that are taking laws off the books, because we are trading one form of slavery for another," said Clyde Bundy. Yes, that is true. Um... Yeah. So yeah, when when they uh, did the uh, with Lincoln, I guess did the Emancipation Proclamation, saying, "All right, everybody's free now, no more slaves." Uh, well, he was overridden by the banks. 
And the bank said, no, 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 not that nobody's slave. Everybody's a slave down there. Yeah. You're equal. Yeah, you, right. you, you want an equality? <laughs> Here right. you go. You're all freaking slaves. Yeah, hey, you read it, and Hal reads it, uh, extractions, pains, and punishments, and among exactions. other things. Yeah, exactions. exactions. Yeah. Not extractions, exactions. Exactions, oh, yeah, but they'll be extraction, uh, extracting a little high enough, yes, if you ain't got something to pay, right? Just as the IRS. Uh huh. You know that even the uh, Department of Education has, uh, and people to argue for this, I guess that they they have a a SWAT team unit now, like all the other Who does? Uh, uh, Department of uh, Education. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, like they armed all the uh, uh, the uh, Department of Interior, um, the Forest Service, the Fish and Wildlife uh, Bureau of Land Management. I mean, they, these guys got tactical units, you know, like you think of in Los Angeles SWAT teams, you know. Um, and and who who makes up these units? Well, obviously people with uh, uh, past experience. Where you get them from? From the wars that uh, we keep uh, perpetuating over overseas, you know, in the interest of empire. Because really, I mean. We're not trying to free anybody. We're not trying to export democracy. Nope. So what do you do? People protest against this. What happens? Uh, comply or die. Uh, that's that's where we're at. Right. Hammond Bundy, he's been uh, in the forefront in national news, continuing there with his uh, resistance to being masked up. Uh, they were making laws in the, the state, uh, the, the House or the state Senate or whatever it was there in Oregon. And he went in and took a seat in the uh, press box. And they want to run him out of there. Now, what is the press? Um, mine was a big old cardboard sign. One of my first one simply said media on it when I went to 2014 uh, Bundy Ranch. And then you helped me shriek her on down to where I could hang it like a lapel and wore it in the courtroom. Used it for identification to cops uh, all throughout. Identification and notification. What is that? It makes me uh, press. Because why? Well, I could just write one little sentence on Facebook and, and give opinion, and that would still make it press, the freedom of the press. I don't need... Uh, endorsement by some supposed uh, mainstream media that that makes it true so uh going back going back up there to uh black letter law and, and what uh obligation uh where are you at yeah there that every citizen owes to society the duty to give giving testimony in the enforcement of law the law it says but more importantly, into the violation of that enforcement of the law, and that's what I saw. And deception the whole way. When when Sheriff Gillespie shows up before he goes up on the stage, and there I am in the photographs that go around the the country and even around the world. That was my Forrest Gump moment in history. Uh, but I was involved in getting that stage set up for the for the uh, with the speakers and long story there. But Gillespie comes up and he says. Yeah, uh, I got the call on the way out. The the feds are packing up and headed out, just standing down. And then, after an hour, you know, give them a little extra time, they go down there to release the cattle, and there they are. This uh, military unit standing with fully loaded automatic weapons, assault rifles, yes, because they were intended to assault Americans. But with a few hundred people standing there in the gap, uh, it kind of made them back down. So, what can we do? Uh, unfortunately, it takes a lot of people, and that plays against you as well. Um, there comes the agent provocateur. Look what happened in in the D.C. at the Capitol. And unfortunately, these uh, these cults, these uh, they they think they're goats. Uh, unfortunately, um, they're still running with the cattle, and the 
wildness is gone. Most people are tamed. There's, uh, I see very little hope. I think the world's gone so far that I, I had one point I thought that we were at the verge of tipping it back upright, but I just don't know. Uh, especially after Trump and Biden in these last few years, uh, the idiocy reigns in America. Are you a are you a colt or a goat? Are you a ram or a lamb? I'm water. <laughs> Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Lee. <laughs> oh, hey, him too. <laughs> uh, yeah. There ain't no John Wayne. Ain't no freaking John Wayne. No. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm no uh, I'm no cowboy. <laughs> Yippee ki yay! Oh, here I I'm over at chat. I was out of chat the whole time. Um, looks like I missed a lot. I find that sometimes, when doing a live show, it's best to be out of chat. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, so, well, hard to keep up. That, 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 that could be a major ass distraction right there. Um, <laughs> my food didn't oh, show up. What's that? My food didn't show up. He's pretty distracting. My my food didn't show up either. Of course, I didn't order any <laughs> food, and nobody. My food won't show up until I go make it. <laughs> my food sardini from Algiers. Yeah. He's been oh a, that guy not yeah. food <laughs> yes yeah. he's been a Facebook friend for oh uh, since about the beginning of me getting on Facebook when I went uh, yeah I uh, I thought that was pretty awesome that's what I really loved about one of the things I really loved about Facebook in the beginning was be able to actually go around the world um, virtually and meet people and so I I mean talk you through Skype to folks that uh, become friends with down uh, Australia and England and other parts of the world. It's just uh, this day that we live in, we have so much potential and so much chance to, to make right the wrongs of this world. And unfortunately, uh, and it's going to be expedited uh, very, very soon, the, the toughness, the roughness and that is life. Uh, yes, my food. Um, that is upon us. And, and the dollar, oh man, this COVID relief thing, what a scam. Uh, it's just more transfer to the wealth, to the those that already got it. Um, yeah. If you got any money, my best advice is spend it now while you can still get something with it. <laughs> There's a mom and pop oh. food. <laughs> my food. What is it, Paul Food? <laughs> Where's our son food at? <laughs> Looking for soul food and a place to eat. Uh, um. <laughs> so, hey, let's wrap up the last few minutes right here, and uh, let's do a run down. Tomorrow, we got the Redneck Dentist at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Doc Mike, he's got a pretty good show here. How many is he up to here, reckon? Who? Uh, uh, Doc Mike, the redneck dentist, tomorrow, 5 o'clock. Oh, I think, I think tomorrow's his fourth show. Oh, uh, no, no, Lou Reed, Moose. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I think he's his fourth show tomorrow. Uh, All right, sure. yeah, good one. I got yeah. distracted by the TTS that Donna was telling me she befriended him when uh, I was uh, – suffering from the TTS. I am uh, glad to announce that my belly and my butthole are happily in accord. Again. <laughs> it's good to have those two working together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. I think he's going to do some more of the uh, DIY stuff tomorrow. Uh, maybe some gardening and such. Uh, he's, he's good with all that stuff. I he, I saw a video of his property there. He's got a really nice setup uh, uh, for, for doing a lot of those type of things. And uh, he's a sharp guy, sharp guy, Mister Redneck Dennis. Yeah, Doc um, Mike, shout out, Doc Mike. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, tomorrow, three p.m. or five p.m. Eastern, which that's is three right. p.m. Mike. 
Uh-huh. And then Sunday, we uh, we play trivia. If you got fast fingers, come on along and have some fun. Fast fingered fun. Woohoo! That's uh, yeah. noon right here. Wow, we're listening to the blues. Yeah. 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 Blues fans. Uh huh. Uh huh. Noon if o'clock. You, if you like, if if you like rock and roll, then you like the blues. You may not realize it, but if you do, then you do. Um. <laughs> and you know who. Who, who, who. <laughs> so we got three hours of that going on, having fun. And there's always ducks and fish. You can, uh, you can catch them or kill them, befriend them or feed them. That's up to you. Uh, this little game that uh, comes along here. I've got, I've killed 665 ducks. And I'm going to tell you, I've got my gun loaded. Oh, I can't quite reach it for here. I hope that gut duck don't come along right now, damn devil duck. 666 ducks will be my next kill of ducks right here at RealLibertyMedia.com. RLMRadio.xyz. 3 o'clock Sunday, following the blues, is Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. Been a great big influence on my life. And, you know, I, I, it's one of my uh, highest honors. Oh my God! I heard it. <laughs> Come here, Ducky. <laughs> Lock and load. Oh, oh. <laughs> I met I met Hal on my trip in 2017 around the country. One of my highest honors. A great man and very influential, and I think probably the preservation of my life and freedom all through these uh, walks and stands that I've done and the Ponder Gander. Um, Monday. Uh, two o'clock Eastern. We've got uh, it's all connected <laughs> with you, Mossberg. Yeah. Mr. Mossberg. <laughs> <laughs> so you and Circle are doing uh, uh, it's all connected. Uh, it's all connected. It's all connected. All connected. connected. It's all connected. All connected. <laughs> That's Mondays at two o'clock Eastern time, and we have uh. No Tuesday, no Wednesday. We're back again on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time with uh, you and Moose Girl's new show, which is Free Your Mind. Free Your Mind. Yeah, yeah. we're uh, you know we're still uh, finding our direction and uh, working out some kinks, but uh, you know whatever. We still did a show, um, and I thought I thought it was all right. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't know how everybody took it. Took I like it. it. Yeah, but. Uh, I mean, everybody likes you and Moose Girl, and we'd probably feel uh, a great loss if y'all had uh, not come back with a new show after 13 years of the Freaker's Ball, y'all. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this show with you today. I, it uh, gave me a lot of ease um, through connecting through this and walking through that. And I didn't even grab up my notes and nothing like that, or play any of the other stuff that I was intended on to. And I got a couple of pages, but um, I think uh, it needs. I started rewriting some of that, and it needs a little bit more uh, rewritten again. Uh, to, uh, telling about the uh, the fat man, and really and truly, I'm a fat man inside, and I've, I've about killed that man. We relate the fat man to uh, want and desire. Uh, and there's also good want desires too that uh, we want to to do good and do right, and so that's the fight we're in in this world because there are those that would do do us wrong and harm us and even kill us, uh, lock us away. Um, that will bring me right back here after after y'all uh, getting your show back together, and yeah, we're proud for that. And again next week at. Uh, Noon Central, 1 p.m. Eastern. It's more of American distance. It's uh, What Matters. It's Ponder Gander, and I'm your host, Vincent Easley. Uh, Mr. Grim Near, he is the man here that uh, is our curator of Real Liberty Media. And thanks again for coming along with me, Grim Near. And uh, I'll, sure. go, I'll go kill this here in a second. You say bye bye to the folks and then hang on with me, and we'll come back. Uh, and yeah, and, and, and let me just, just say that next time, a slight bit more. Notice. Up front notice <laughs> would, be, well, would be appreciated. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, it just struck me all at once. You know, it'd be cool if Grimner came on with me for about five minutes and we kind of Yeah, yeah about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, yeah. Hey, so yeah. listen, uh, um, what do you think? Uh, can I sign you and your wife up for the t- new timeshare? Really, really great deal. You're going to love it here. Listen, you can go down to Florida, uh, up up north when it's when it's hot in the summertime. We got places everywhere. You're going to love it. So uh, here, here's no, the but I'd really like to hear more about the extended warranty for the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Flash says greed is an anchor we refuse to release. Thank you, Mr. Weirdo Flash, man. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. We'll see you next time. You know, I'm going to hit a pause.